sports fans, ASMR Sports, back with your daily video. Today is a non-sport video, and as I mentioned uh, yesterday, I'm going to do kind of an 80s themed one here. Although I was thinking I should eat something from the 80s, and it's our pet kids. Uh, we're not around in the 80s. Uh, I guess maybe, maybe the late 80s. I doubt it would say here, but... Uh, a copyright date, but um, yeah, I ran out of Bubblicious, which would have been perfect, but I have no more, so anyways, I thought I would eat some of these. Um, so, uh, here's the thing. Um, I, I, I might have mentioned this before, but in case I didn't, um, one of my favorite things these days um, is on Sirius XM, the subscription satellite radio service. Um, they have, um, actually I'm going to turn up the microphone here in front of me so you can hear my tabs. They have, um, they have a lot of 80s stations, one main one on the satellite and then on the website that they have a bunch of other stations. They have, uh, uh quite a bit more of 80s content. And one of the things that they do, um, actually on both of those, uh, formats is, uh, Every week they do a, a, a top 40 countdown um, from like history. So like um, the most recent one, which we're, we're going to get in depth with, is like the top 40 songs on February 21st, 1986. So like, you know, two days and uh, however many years ago. Um, uh, that, was the, that was the chart. Um, and... Uh, I think it's a really cool kind of time capsule, um, you know, to listen to these uh, these uh, countdowns from a particular, you know, date in history that matches the date, you know, where we are right now in the calendar. And um, for a while, I've thought, you know, there's kind of there's got to be a good way to share um, uh, share this uh, this kind of stuff with you guys. Obviously, I can't buy you all Sirius XM. But um, presumably you all have uh, YouTube. So what I did is um, I went over to uh, YouTube here and I created a playlist that's just the um, top 40 countdown from February 21, 1986. The same songs they would play on um, on the Sirius uh, show I just mentioned. Although they have, you know, they have a VJ um, or a DJ, I guess, depending on how how you can how you define that but their dj is actually a vj that used to work at um mtv they have like a handful of them that do 80 their 80s content so they'll like introduce the songs and do a little bit of um <coughs> kind of background in history on each one which unfortunately i don't have the sort of uh knowledge to do but i i i, I do want to talk about some of these songs and kind of show you What's what's on the list, and um, I will I will uh, I'll try anyways. Yeah, it's got to be a way to put a link. This is just on my ASMR Sports channel, so you guys should be able to see um, this playlist because I made it public. But I will attempt to, to link it in the description for this video. So check the description and click it, and you'll be able to see the list. And then you can play it, and you'll get all the songs in order. These are in order from number 40, right here. Actually, it's currently playing. It says, um, close it so I can say. But number 40 is Falco. Rock me Amadeus. So I am going to um, press uh, play on some of these just so we can kind of see the beginning of the video. Sometimes it's the actual, um, you know, video that would have appeared on, like, MTV. Um, sometimes it's just, uh, the song itself, and there's just a photo of, like, the album or something, so Rock Me Amadeus is by this band called Falcon. I think, I think they're probably, like, a German band, and you can kind of see the whack, wacky, uh, <laughs> costume stuff going on in this, and it's, it's kind of a wacky song that I never really was a huge fan of, but 
um, I've heard it a lot because it is a big, you know, 80s hit. So, um, you may wish to uh, check that out for yourself. Next up, we have Bangles. Um, Manic Monday. The Bangles were um, Belinda Carlisle's band before she ventured out on her own. And uh, they had quite a few hits in the 80s. I feel like they were actually like charting hits like as early as like 82 or something which I discovered because I they showed up on a, one of these countdowns from like the early 80s and I was like wow I can't believe they were around that long kind of amazing but um Belinda Carlisle of course having his place on earth um Circle in the Sand Lots of other hits um, after she left the Bengals uh, in like 88 or something like that, 87. And uh, anyways, you're probably familiar with a lot of their songs. This one, um, Marilyn Martin, Night Moves. I was not familiar with this. Um, you'll get a half a Whoa, that's really loud in my... I just realized you're not going to be able to hear this. Um, oh, sorry. Um, all right, I'm going to try to get the audio here. Yeah. So it's just playing on my speakers. So there you go. Um, I, I'm not going to play more than, like, probably three seconds of a song. Just because I know that... Um, Everybody is <laughs> scared of getting like copyright strikes, and from you to me, it's perfectly legal for me to um, show like three seconds of a video and audio to comment on the audio and video, um, and analyze it, and give you my thoughts and so forth. But I understand the algorithms that YouTube uses to <laughs> um, analyze whether there's copyright material and, and stuff are, are very probably strict so I want to be very careful um, so all right there's that one um, dire straits walk of life is number 37 um, most people have heard of this one um, dire straits obviously a huge band so I'm not even gonna talk too much about it. I'm not really too much of a dire straits fan um, guess I will click on the link here um, gonna mute that so they'll should all mute now um do the walk walk run yeah do the walk walk it's that song um so actually some good uh, sports uh, references there in that one so that's pretty cool stevie wonder i'm a big stevie wonder fan um maybe not as big as um i used to be i when i was in high school i really loved Steve Wonder bought a ton of his old albums. Um, Go Home was not one that I was super familiar with, so that's kind of a deep cut for Stevie Wonder. Um, but it's charting uh, this week at uh, number 36. Um, Sly Fox, Next Go All The Way, is number 35. Um, let's go all the way. Um, you may have heard that if you listen to, you know, 80s music and stuff like that, but it was a pretty big hit. and. They were kind of, I think, like a one-hit wonder. They didn't have much of a career, um, but, you know, it's one of those prototypical 80s songs. Aretha Franklin, Another Night. This is another kind of like deep cut from a pretty major artist um, that I was not too familiar with. Um, so uh, you might want to check that out if you're an Aretha, f Aretha, Aretha fan. Um, upbeat rhythmic music. We can just let, we can read the descriptions of these things. <laughs> ABC, How to Be a Millionaire. This is like a, one of those cartoon videos, kind of like, um, uh, was it that AHA Take On Me was sort of a cartoon, was a, was a mix of cartoon and real world. Um, but uh, I wasn't, I, I don't think I remembered this one. Yeah. Not too familiar with this one. Um, 
another one of those kind of in the weeds, but that's why I like these countdowns, because, you know, these songs were good enough to have had at least something of a following back when they were on the chart, but they may be sort of obscure enough that you've never heard of them, so if you're like me and you kind of love the vibe of 80s music, but you're not, you know, you're kind of tired of the, you know, all the big hits that you get <laughs> on, you know, these compilations of 80s hits, and, you know, you've heard a bajillion times, um, you know, you may get exposed to uh, some stuff that are a lot deeper cuts and, and, and kind of interesting and maybe things you've never heard before, so that's pretty awesome, I think. And one of the reasons I really love these countdowns, um, a lot of times also you'll sort of come across a song that, like, for you was a big, you know, sort of part of your memory from the 80s music scene, but you had just haven't heard it in forever, so you're like, oh, man, that one, I remember that one. Anyways, next up, Say You, uh, Say Me by Lionel Richie at number 32. It's a huge, massive, gigantic hit that we're all familiar with. Um, and so I won't say too much about it, but I love, I love uh, Lionel Richie stuff from this, from this era. Actually, this album this, that this is on, um, I think, is uh, Dancing on the Ceiling. It's got a bunch of really big hits in it, and I am a big fan of it. Um... Stevie Nicks Talk to Me, another pretty dang big hit. Paul McCartney uh, coming in at uh, number 30 with Spies Like Us. Um, I don't know why, but I liked this, this movie a lot when I was a kid, even though I don't even think I saw the whole thing <laughs> um, until much later in my life. Um, but uh, the song, I can't remember if I heard that too much. When I was, uh, you know, a kid back at this time, um, but it, it, it's a, it's a fun song. It's kind of kind of crazy that uh, Paul McCartney would sort of do something like this, because you know, goofy <laughs> soundtrack uh, music is not really a genre you associate with Paul McCartney. But uh, there you have it. Spies like us um, is the uh, number thirty. I think I said yeah, number thirty now. Uh, next up, 29, Charlie Sexton, Beats So Lonely. That's another pretty deep cut that I was not familiar with um, when I found it here in the in the chart. So um, you guys will have to enjoy this um, perhaps for the first time in a long time or maybe the first time ever. Yeah, kind of an upbeat sort of rock song. Um, all right, In Excess is number 28, What You Need. Give me what you need, give me what you need, that one. <laughs> if I can, I'm just going to sing you guys the, um, you know, the chorus. So I don't have to play the song and risk my channel. Um, Lover Boy, this could be night, th th this could be the night. This, 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 I feel like, is one of those, like, very classic 80s, um, you know, sort of a overly emotive, but, like, pretty... Um, catchy kinds of slow songs um, that uh, you just have to appreciate, and I like this one quite a bit. It's uh, 27 on the chart here, um, so yeah, only three million views. That's pretty small. You can kind of see the um, like the popularity of these songs uh, based on how many hits they have. Um, at least uh, in most cases, these are posted by like either Vivo, which you know is sort of like a I don't know, like a publishing agency, I guess, for um, like videos. So they do a lot of um, these posts, and then a lot of times the artists themselves, like in excess, look has a YouTube account, and then they post um, their their stuff, and then you know get the ad revenue. So I'm hopefully you know driving lots of people to click these and listen to them and bring some revenue to whoever uh, posted these mostly the artists, or I guess sometimes they're um, publishers or other companies that have rights to publish this music. Um, all right, next up, R.O.C.K. in the USA. Who doesn't know this one? John Mellencamp. Um, this was uh, number 26. It's one of those one of those 80 songs you will hear a lot in, uh, you know, greatest hits from the 80s. So uh, no need to belabor that one. Uh, Freddie Jackson here. Uh, you'll never love you like I do. I don't know if I ever. It's kind of an upbeat one. But uh, yeah, Freddie J 
Jackson, one of those kind of, um, you know, pretty, uh, pretty, um, accomplished 80s R&B artist that, uh, I don't know, you just haven't heard from in a long time. Um, so, fun to see his stuff show up here. Sim Simple Minds, Sanctify Yourself. Well, Simple Minds has lots of great 80s, um, stuff out there, and this is, uh, one of the, I would say, maybe like, you know, top five, but, uh, you know, kind of closer to four or five amongst their songs. Um, and not, you know, one of the top most uh, known songs that they've, they've done, but this is number 24 on the chart here from February 21, 1986. ZZ Top. Stage is not really a big ZZ Top fan myself, so I won't talk too much about them. Elton John, Nikita, this has a ton of views, um, you know, what can you say, it's Elton John, if we've all heard this song, classic sort of mid-80s, Elton John, kind of easy listening, you know, pop rock, ready for the world, digital display, this is number 21, these guys had a few big hits, um, name, but they were huge, huge, huge in the 
early to uh, mid 80s until uh, I was just thinking how crazy it is that you know I, I didn't really listen to like Wham at all you know when they were together um, and like really the first time I started to sort of buy my own you know cassettes and music was around like about 87 and that's when George Michael went solo and he like kind of had this totally different persona as a solo artist you know he was like this he is this very hip mature kind of sex symbol um artist whereas in wham he was like this you know sort of like a uh, bubbly kind of um you know just like uh, effervescent very youthful um type of uh, kind of boy band you know character and then as a solo artist you know he he put on a five o'clock shadow and like a leather jacket and grew out his hair and uh, you know always had a like a pouty kind of modeling look on his face <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah and started writing songs about you know like very taboo topics at the time like I want your sex which is kind of funny to think about how scandalous you know how scandalous that song was back in 87 88 or how like scandalous um, two live crew was um, you know, we all, I, I mean, I, it's hard to think of that sort of music as anything but just sort of, um, just adorable, <laughs> considering, like, you know, pretty much every, like, you know, person on earth is about, you know, one accidental click away from, like, the most hardcore pornography you can possibly imagine, given that we have the internet now, and, and, uh, you know, everything is, uh, so accessible, and, uh, it's just seems like, um, what was taboo back then is just sort of funny, um, but uh, um, yeah, that's something I was thinking about George Michael the uh, I don't know the other day um, when I heard his uh, song on a AD station. All right, so let's see. Uh, Sheila E is coming in at number twelve. A love bazaar. Sheila E, of course, a big staple of that kind of dance R and B um, scene from the mid. She, she kind of started in the early 80s, I think, and then kind of went all the way through the late 80s. Um, but never was too big into her. Atlantic Star Secret Lovers is uh, one of those kind of classic, uh, you know, ballads from this time period. And uh, I think they had some other pretty big hits, but I couldn't tell you what they are off the top of my hands. Well, Dion Warwick, that's what friends are for, my goodness. Let's take a look at the harmonica in Stevie Wonder's hands. About to play that super memorable little riff that begins this song and boy if you haven't heard this I don't know where you've been for the last uh, 40 years but huge huge hit there was this you know this video that uh, you know showed all these huge stars they got Elton John and uh, let's see who else was in this uh, Steve Wonder of course um, that's uh, oh man she's one of the big big like Pale Bell I think is who that is um uh, who's that? Um, it's one of the big, it's not, not Aretha Franklin, but uh, one of the big, huge queens of R&B. So anyways, that was a cool song back in the day that was a massive, massive hit. Um, let's see. Uh, Survivor Burning Heart. That was from the Rocky IV album, and I think if we watch this video, yeah, it's going to have, um, you know, scenes from Rocky IV. Uh, I remember when I was in high school, which was well after 1984, but I was a big 80s music fan even then, and um, um, I had this soundtrack, and there's a couple of really awesome songs on here, in addition to like, you know, that sort of montage training music uh, that we all love Rocky, in, in Rocky, so you can listen to that while you're climbing, you know, uh, a couple hundred steps in Philadelphia on your um, morning jog and feel, you know, super inspired. Uh, Mike and the Mechanics, you guys, I love Mike and the Mechanics. Um, their uh, lead singer is, uh, oh man, Paul Carrick, um, at least for um, a few of their albums, basically their most popular albums. Um, this guy named Paul Carrick, and he, he has like a couple of things he's done solo, but they call him the man with the golden voice and for good reason. Um, I just think he has such a great voice, um, and Silent Running is a, is a great song, but I really love um, uh, In the Living Years 
by Mike and the Mechanics, which I think came out a couple years, or maybe like one year after this album came out. I'm not sure when this one came out. Obviously, this is charting in 86, but that album might have came out in 85, or, or, the, or the song I'm thinking of maybe on this exact album. But I, these are both great songs, and man, I, I, I really wish they made more music. <laughs> but um, Mike and the Mechanics, you may not know. Um, the Mike in there is Mike Rutherford, and he was uh, one of the... Um, uh, members of uh, Genesis, so you'll see him in, uh, you know, Genesis stuff, working along uh, Phil, alongside Phil Collins, and um, Mike and the Mechanics was his kind of side project that uh, I thought created some pretty awesome music, um, and they're, I think, still kind of around. They have a, you know, a singer now that, um, you know, sounds a little bit like Paul Carrick and does the Paul Carrick songs, but it's not him. So I think they, I, they, I don't know if they've toured recently, but, you know, in the sometime in the 2000s, they've certainly toured and they put out music, you know, with their new uh, singer. Um, Dream Academy, Life in a Northern Town, it's such a sublime sort of uh, melancholy, um, you know, uh, just sort of, I feel like this uh, really gives you this video and this music, it just really gives you a, a, a such a, perfect, I think, sense of the um, UK. I, I'm not sure where exactly, if this is in England or like in Ireland or Northern Ireland or something, but somewhere in the UK, I think, and um, I don't know, just like, <laughs> this thing just like, is sort of like a banner song for the UK, in, in my view. If you're from the UK and you're like, what the hell, that guy's from uh, Sweden, <laughs> then uh, I apologize, but I, I'm pretty sure he's from this, this is uh, all shot like in the UK somewhere. Life in Northern Town is about um, life somewhere in the UK. I'm going to guess England, but um, like probably Northern England, maybe. Um, okay, let's keep going. Um, the Sweetest Taboo by Sade. Of course, every Sade hit, I feel like, is, uh, you know, just a little little drop of uh, relaxation in song form, and uh, Swiss Taboo is one of her biggest um, songs, and uh, can't go wrong with like a Sade uh, Greatest Hits album or something, if you're wanting to relax and uh, take it easy for a while. Um, let's see where that's coming in, Sade, we're getting very close to the end here, that's number 6 on the Top 40 Countdown from February 21, 1986, I kind of feel like a disc jockey when I say stuff like that, and it makes me feel um, good, so if you don't like it, I don't know what to tell you. James Brown, Living in America, this was also from uh, the Rocky IV soundtrack. Um, of course, Rocky IV, for those of you who don't know, is the one where Rocky um, fights the Russian guy, speaking of Russia, <laughs> he fights the big Russian guy, played by Dolph Lundgren, who's not Russian, but uh, appears to be so in that movie, and uh, James Brown, like, is a kind of an opening act for uh, one of their fights. He comes out and, you know, it's got all this, uh, you know, American, like, uh, red, white, and blue sort of uh, decorations on the stage and stuff like that. It's just, like, <laughs> super kind of funny. Um, all right, Starship, Sarah, love this song. Love this song. Gosh, I, I remember this song very vividly from when I was a kid. Uh, for some reason, I always think of when I was... Um, I was in a local uh, convenience store where actually I bought my first ever baseball card. They were 1986 tops. Um, one of the reasons why 1986 is like one of my favorite years of all time. Um, anyways, I don't know. I was in that store, and this this I remember this song being on the PA. I'm just thinking it was such a cool song. Um, so. That is uh, number four. Number three, Billy Ocean, When the Going Gets Tough, the Tough Get Going. That's another one of those mega hits that's super poppy, super upbeat, and you know it, it shows up on a lot of kind of 80s greatest hits. Songs, Mr. Mr. is one of those, I feel like bands that, kind of like Mike and the Mechanics, I think they had a couple songs that were just phenomenal and just very, like, unique, I, I, I don't know, they just like really hit me in a certain way where I was like, man, I love that music, and I 
I just wish there was more of it in the world, but Mr. Mr. really had two big songs. This is one of them, Kyrie. Um, and, uh, the rest of their, the rest of their stuff is kind of, the <laughs> um, but I've listened to all of their, like, output and, uh, tried to find stuff that might be, um, you know, nearly as good as, as, as this song and their other big one, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember what the other one is called, but you guys will remind me, um, but the other one is bigger, but they're both pretty dang big and they're both like really great, unique, just kind of super like 80s songs. I don't know how to explain it. So go listen to that. Um, um, Broken Wings, that's the other huge one. Um, and then number one on the chart here is Whitney Houston, How Will I Know? Of course, we all know this song. How will I know if he really loves me? Um, so, uh, I wonder who wrote this. I wonder if they'll say it. Um, yeah, it doesn't say. I, I feel like she did not write this song. I feel like there were a bunch of her songs that she didn't write, but maybe I am wrong about that. Um, I was kind of thinking like maybe this had like a, a famous songwriter, like somebody who uh, wrote it, you know, while they were in, obs in obscurity and then they went on to have their own career or something like that, but, um, there you go, that's all 40 hits on February 21st, 1986, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and more importantly, I hope you check out this, um, this playlist in the description, and, uh, you listen to all these songs, and I hope there's not too many ads in them, I have no control over that, but, um, yeah, uh, I might do this again if people are, you know, interested. And, uh, you know, I can uh, find some cool lists. I will tell you, I hate, like, the early 80s, like, 81 and 80 and 82. Just don't even want to listen to them. 83's getting there. There'd be, like, you know, half the songs that I think are pretty solid in there. 84, now we're talking maybe 75% of that. 85, we're talking 85%. And then 86, like, 90% of these songs I enjoy and would love and actually 87, 88, and 89, I think I probably love like 90% of those songs, there's just so many cool ones in there, I think, um, but, uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see what shows up here, all right, guys, hope you're doing well, see you tomorrow for a sports card video, we'll, uh, have lots of sports card content on the way, so, all right, have a great one, bye now.